Who knows, who knows, who knows, who knows? I just go where the trade wind blows, sending love to my friends and foes. Is that the uh, famous <laughs> fabric that we shut down? And uh, yeah. Craig David came and we sold it out? Yeah, this is yeah. fabric. Yeah. So yeah, you got your new book out in that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. have. I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, it came out this week. You know about the rewind, right? You use it sometimes. I do use a rewind. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, let me give you a bit of knowledge as to where it came from. You're yeah. going to love this, Dave. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. going to love this. Yeah, so I actually invented the rewind, <laughs> funny enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but I've taken his breath away. You know. <laughs> um, so what it is, is that one day um, there was this beautiful, famous tune called 138 by DJ Zinc. Mm -hmm. And he played it to me first time I ever heard it. Yeah. And I sort of went mental at the time. And what I did, I just went like that with my hand, simultaneously invented the gun finger, knocked the deck back. <laughs> therefore, the rewind was happened. invented. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. been a staple in music ever since. Exactly, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Do you know, I always wondered who invented it. I'm so delighted I finally met the man who created the Rewind Pull It Up My Selector. That's what I'm saying. MC Grinder, yeah. boss. Exactly, yeah. Also, did you know that you could release your book audio? Because no one really reads anymore, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Put it on dub player or something. Do you know what? Well, we are thinking about doing yeah. an audio edition. Of yeah, the book. good for scratches that, as well. Because otherwise, it's a bit of a waste of time, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Some people do read, you know, Grinder. Yeah, I mean, only if you're in jail, though. Really. Yeah, exactly. It? Yeah, but that's good for the time. I actually did read the book. This is and, my what? And I've actually got some questions. If that's all right. Decoy. What? Yeah. Never talk. Free. But like, it's David Rodigan. Man. He's like MBE and all that. He prefers me to you. But, Anyway, but yeah, is it all right if I ask you some questions and that? Like, Go ahead, Deacon. And can I uh, firstly compliment you on the, the Clarks, man? Like, the Wallabies. Yeah, bad man. Trust me, like, I wore my special loafers today as he well. Shoes as shoe well, clash. Yeah. Yes. Shoe clash. Yeah, I've got Air Max 95. Carry on. All right, cool, man. But uh, yeah, the book, man, is heavy, 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 heavy. Like, I actually thought, yeah, to be honest, like, I thought mm, it's probably going to be like an old guy just chatting about, oh, yeah where he's from and do you know what I mean? But it's actually sick, yeah? Because like the first, first like chapter is about Bob Marley and like Bob Marley is a legend, yeah? Bob Marley invented bass, right. do you know that? <laughs> yeah? Him and Akon. Basically where Gary's came from. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, Sorry. could you like, cause I, I want to know like, what is it like meeting the man Bob Marley? Like, if you really love something and you enjoy it, if you get to meet the people that make it, mm -hmm. it it's very, very special. And that night, Thank you. <laughs> selector, yeah. that night in Fulham, I'd gone to see the Whalers, Bob, Peter and Bunny in a pub. Yeah. Oh, West the, side, West, West London, yeah. yeah. Fulham, Greyhound Palace Road. The Greyhound pub on Fulham Palace Road. And it was an amazing night. And when I came out, I was walking down the street and mm -hmm. I saw a cloud of smoke in a shop doorway. Uh, yeah. And when it cleared, because I thought it was on fire, yeah. with Bob Marley on the end of a spliff. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's my Bob. Yeah, typical, typical. Yeah. And then, and could you tell me, like, when you, because you were a radio DJ as well, yeah? Uh, I still am. You still are? Sick, sick, similar. sick. Yeah, sick. similar vibes, similar yeah. vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you met him on a stairway, right? Like, how? yeah, I was, um, it was a Friday afternoon and it was at Island Records, and I was going up the staircase, and he came down the staircase. Yeah. And um, he was on a stopover flight from Zimbabwe. He'd performed at the Zimbabwe Independence Celebration. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. And it was just that moment when I was face to face with Bob Marley, and I jumped all protocol. And I said to him, I have a radio show on a Saturday night. You know, please, 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 will you be my guest tomorrow night? Sure. And uh, there was a couple of elders with him, and they nodded their approval. And... Um, and I, I got the interview and he took me upstairs into the listening room and said, do you want to listen to a new track I've just recorded? Oh. And I said, yeah. And he, I remember he wore this blue denim jacket. He took the cassette out, put it in, press play. And I'm sitting in the listening room at Island Records with Bob Marley and Aston family man Barrett. And I can't believe it's happening. Yeah. And at the end of it, he said, 
What do you think of the mix? Do you think that's a good FM mix for a New York radio? Because he was quite specific about what he was making and how he mixed it. And mm -hmm. You wanted it only for New York? Yeah, and I just thought, no one will believe this. Yeah. And I said, I thought it was an FM mix. And he said, okay, you get the world exclusive tomorrow night. And the next night, my Saturday night Capital Radio show, um, at the end of the interview, we pressed play on the tape and it was boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 uh, to be loved. Yeah. So when was your first dub plate? When did you cut yours? My first dub plate, I cut them in, uh, in, in London. But the first dub plate I cut in Jamaica was, a, was at King Tubby's studio um, in Waterhouse, Western Kingston. It was uh, late at night and um, I'll never forget it. I was him and King Jam Prince Jammy in the studio. And um, I watched in those days, you, a dub plate was a different mix to the song that was on the street so, mm -hmm. or an advanced copy. So they took it from the four track and they mixed it there. They, they cut straight onto the acetate. Yeah. And then they, paid, <laughs> then they paid their money. You paid your money and you were good to go. And also, like, as being a Jamaican DJ, uh, like, clashes is, like, well important to your whole, whole ethos of being a DJ. Like, could you tell us some about your classic clashes? Um, I've seen some sick ones with you, actually. Same. Yeah, proper. Clashes um, are very exciting because they take it to another level. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in fabric now, and I remember the first time I played here, it was for Dub Police, and it was Casper who invited me down. And I was very, actually very, very nervous that night because I was, for the first time, playing to a non-reggae audience. Different crowd. Yeah. Mm. But um, w clashing is equally exciting in that you don't know what's going to happen and you're going into uh, a heavily populated room, to say the least, because it's a bit of a blood sport. Mm. And they, a crowd are looking for people to get knocked out. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's according to how much prep you've done in terms of whether or not you can get through those first rounds. If you can keep your guard up and box your way around the first few rounds where your uh, opponents will try to play dub plates that they know you've got, so mm -hmm. they'll try and voice them. But where they then will find it difficult is if, you're, if you've got dub plates that they haven't got because those artists are dead. Um, and they can't get them. So there's well, an advantage there. It's a bit mm -hmm. of a sick advantage, but mm -hmm. it is an advantage. It's still an advantage. Though, yeah. it? Destroy man, lyrically. So you've got yeah. that. And they live on. Yeah, yep. exactly. Through you. <laughs> Through the sound clash. Like and a, and like, if, you, like if, you, if you can just keep, keep your guard up and push through, yeah. when you get into the one-for-one, one, that when, that's when it gets really interesting and very exciting because you, you, you have to prove yourself within 10 plates, within 10 exclusive tunes. And Is that the most tensest bit? It, yeah, well, it, there are other parts where it's tense because you've got to be listening all the time to what your opponents are yeah. playing. And if, if you repeat what they've played, yeah. it's that's, immediate disqualification. And also, you've got less time, so it's more pressure. Yep. You've only got one tune, yep. you know what I mean? So. Yep. It's, you've got to respond very quickly. And if they pull up after 10 or 20 seconds, after they've got the forward, mm. so they, it's their turn, they spin, they get the forward. You've got to be ready to counteract that. Yeah. And if you come with a song that isn't as strong as that, then you won't win that round. They'll win it. Right. So then you're already one nil down. And I think I was five nil down in the 2012 clash and it looked like there was no hope. And then I just slowly pulled back in New York. And then- That's the one you won that year yeah, as well, I won right? It. Yes, big man. But big man um, also one of the uh, newer clashes that I've seen you absolutely destroy actually, um, was the Red Bull culture clash thing as well, which we pretty much helped with that as well. Yeah, yeah. you, you did so actually, to, that, to be fair, Corrupt FM did the wickedest dub plate intro exactly. and it just tore the place down. Mm. I know that Chase and Status and the one and only Shy FX yeah. and MC Rage, we were all yeah. over the moon about that. That really was, thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank Listen, you, because we exactly. actually got bookings out of it. So. Exactly. So we're getting 200 quid an hour now. Yeah. They're only hour sets, but... Takeaway travel and that, you're looking to lease score each. Exactly. So <laughs> that's, thank you. Winning, you know isn't I mean? it? Yeah, yeah. 20 pound a day to do what you love. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the reason I wrote this book is because a number of people over the years said to me, um, you need to write down, there needs to be a record of, of what you've done as a broadcaster and, and how the music has affected you, hence its title. Um, because reggae has been part of my life since I was 14. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, some people are into, um, you know, football, rugby, whatever. Yeah. Um, if you are if you get mesmerized by something and you get fascinated by it, 
you will, as you as you know, your garage. from your, yeah. <laughs> your garage, yeah. um, it, it becomes part of you. And because I've been doing it for so long, um, it was suggested to me. In fact, it was it was essentially Damien Marley who took me aside wow. at, uh, about three years ago after a carnival party, and actually said to me, "I really think you know why 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 haven't you written a book? You should write a book." And he was one of many artists who'd said the same thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I took the telling from Damien Marley, and yeah. I and I so figured splitting the profit with him more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's on a commission. Yeah. yeah, I know you know about all your reggae and all that. Yeah, but um, let me run some shit by you. All right, drop the beat. Hello. Hey, hey. Hey, the pon mat me ya go kick on the dem. M C go and me come to tell them. The pon mat the way they the automatic scan. Who me bridge it to David Rod again? Bo, 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 bo. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Somebody say pull up. Pull up. That means do it again. That means do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. The pon mat me ya go kick on the dem. Who me bridge it the one Rod again? When me come down and bust us like this gang. When me bust us bit, it has a little flame. So. Follow that. Exactly.